in the early days of the 20th century, a Parisian newspaper reporter was anxious to get out of reporting straight facts and into writing fiction. Uh, because he worked as a crime reporter, he had extensive knowledge of the criminal mind. He was looking for the right setting for his story. And when he learned some astonishing facts about the Paris Opera House, he included them. Now, he was amazed to find unexplored vaults here, five stories below the street level, and even better, an artificial lake in the lowest subcellar. Well, this is all he needed for inspiration, and in a short time, he had written the story. Fifteen years after it was published in Paris, it became one of the silent screen's greatest horror movies, Lon Chaney's The Phantom of the Opera. Now, in the early 40s, when Universal decided to remake Phantom, everybody in Hollywood wanted a shot at that role that had made Lon Chaney so famous. First in line was Lon Chaney's son, Lon Chaney Jr. Charles Lawton's name also came up and had made such a wonderful and sympathetic monster in The Hunchback of Notre Dame that they thought he'd be great. But the role of the Phantom was eventually to go to Claude Rains, who accepted it on the condition that he would not be expected to do an imitation of Lon Chaney's performance. Unlike Chaney, Claude Rains decided not to use makeup as the key to his characterization. He wanted only part of his face disfigured, so the makeup department created that wonderful, distinctive, partial mask. Here's Claude Rains in The Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> There is one major similarity between this version of The Phantom of the Opera and the original Lon Chaney silent version. Can you guess what it was? Well, since the set for the Paris Opera House still existed on Universal's back lot, the studio saved hundreds of thousands of dollars by reusing the same set. Studio technicians uh, did have to make uh, one major modification, though. They had to soundproof this whole place because when the original Lon Chaney version was filmed, extraneous noise was not a problem. It was a silent movie. Universal also had to replace the crystal chandelier, which was destroyed in the earlier version. 20,000 pieces of Czech crystal were imported for the new one. Now, if you're a devotee of classical music, some of the themes of the Phantom of the Opera may have sounded familiar to the, uh, the opera in the movie. Amour et Gloire was based on music by Chopin, and another of the arias was taken from Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony. Now, let's take a look at this. <laughs> 